Yo, what's up, guys? Want to give you my two cents in terms of frameworks that are unreasonable for you not to get sales on the TikTok platform with creating the right UGC, whether you're using your network of influencers, whether you're using a third party platform. I want to give you some insight on what I'm doing for my clients, how I'm able to scale our brands up to adding additional 45 to 65K in monthly reoccurring revenue with our system in place in terms of how we lay out the frameworks, how we get sales, how we get influencers to create content that works well. So first things first, right, is I've just seen a ton of posts lately with people not understanding how the Tech Talk platform works. I've spoken to a dozen of econ brand owners who think that they can just use uh, Facebook stock footage from way back to then incorporate that in terms of what works well on the TikTok platform. That does not work, right? TikTok is a different platform. It's not just where you can just copy and paste creatives from Facebook onto the TikTok platform. No, you need to create content that is tailored to get results on the TikTok platform. So what I typically sell, uh, tell clients in the space who are looking to work with my team and I is that there's two types of content, right? You have your general organic content to grow a TikTok profile where you can really just talk about anything in terms of you just need to talk about what the market wants to hear and what do they want to learn from you specifically. When it comes to advertising on the TikTok platform, that's a little bit different where you have to have some sort of storyline from A to Z. And you also have to have frameworks in place to get people to make impulse purchases. Well, the way we do that is through two scenarios. We focus on the content, the structure of the video content. So with that being said, clips no longer than 20 to 30 seconds. This is the ideal range that works really well on the platform. This is what gets results 20, 30 seconds, right? If we shoot a content that a piece of content that is only a minute long, right? We're not going to get as ton of people to watch the whole video as compared to 20, 30 seconds. And in the first five to 10 seconds, we have a strong hook with the hook. What do I mean? Well, we're trying to draw people in. So this is where you address the framework. You address the main problem that's common in the market and offer your product as a solution whether it's apparel brands, right? You can talk about how uncomfortable other brands are compared to your brand, and then you can list off features and benefits. So with that being said, right, clips no longer than 20, 30 seconds. Another way to keep your viewers engaged throughout the whole piece of the 30 to 20 second clips in terms of videos is cut links, right? We want to make sure that we're transitioning through clips rather quickly to keep people as engaged as possible. So with that being said, a way to do that is through three to four second cut links minimum right? We want to make sure that we're transitioning, we're listing off different variations, we're sharing different scenarios of the product and what it looks like on, what it, the product looks like in action, right? And we want to make sure that we keep this tight as possible so that people are engaged throughout each specific clip. I don't know how many times I've seen this where e-com brand owners use creatives and just stick with one to two clips. That doesn't do enough. That doesn't keep the viewer engaged throughout the whole process. So how do you expect to get sales when somebody isn't viewing your content all the way? So cut links no longer three to four seconds. Imagine watching a clip, right? And you're just constantly hit with new variations. You're hit with new cuts, new cuts, right? And if you go into the movies, when they shoot an action scene, there's a ton of changing clips to show and keep the viewer engaged compared to just one long clip of somebody in frame just shooting or whatever. Let's say they have a gun, they're just shooting and that just holds on to that one specific piece that makes the content very, very boring. So in terms of frameworks, here are 10 frameworks that you can use that'd be unreasonable for you not to get sales. First things first is TikTok maybe by X, right? This, this simple hook keeps your audience engaged and they want to learn more about the product. So for example, when you have TikTok maybe by this, you can talk about why the reasons behind why people would want to buy your product. And you can talk about features. You can talk about benefits. You can also talk about information in terms of what people were doing before the specific market and then what the product does after you get it, what's ultimate end result and why did it make you want to buy. So that's just a storyline that you can use. Um, what I've seen work well on the TikTok Creative Center is the website ordering process, right? People just simply screen record themselves in terms of going through, scrolling through the feed, going through the purchases, going through the website and put, and buying the specific product itself. What this does is simply allows tons of content to go viral by showing the influencer's face scrolling on the website to buy the product. 
And one of the hooks you can use was I was able to purchase my favorite product in under a minute. So customers love efficiency. Customers love when they don't have to go through 10 different steps to buy a product. So when you show the website ordering process, you show how easy it is to find the product. You show it how easy it is to, to purchase the product and ultimately how efficient it is when they do receive the product. So people love the website ordering process. That's very much a well underutilized gym to really get results on the TikTok platform. Third, we have unboxing videos, right? This is like the most easiest type of content to make, but this gets the most uh, results possible because people want to see the product get delivered. They want to see, okay, when you do unboxing videos, like what does it look like when you take it out? What does it look like on? So definitely this approach allows you to keep viewers engaged as well as the fourth framework I typically like to follow is three reasons to buy X. So this is short, sweet, but straight to the point when you list features and benefits, right? People are buying for that desired outcome. People don't buy because of, a, they don't, at times people don't even purchase and they don't care about the price at all, depending on what type of product you present to them, right? People just want the desired outcome. If it's going to make their life easier, don't you think they'd invest into it since it make um, the whole entire situation in which they're living in much more comfortable and much more easier? So three reasons to buy this is, also, you can also frame it where you list the three pain points in the market, and then you can transition it to the three reasons to buy the specific product. So just for some context, the way we structure our videos and the way we structure our ads in a specific framework is that we have a common problem that's shared across the, the board for all of the competitors, right? So we address the specific problem, and then we center the product as a key solution. And then this is where we incorporate specific hooks so for example on the fifth framework right a hook would be ideally when you realize a positive claim about this current product and a simple way that it's different from before and after right so when you realize and you state a positive claim and then you have you talk about the current product this is typically different it's a variation of the before and after and what this does is clearly state okay let's say you address the problem then you list a positive claim about the specific product and how much life is easier with it. Well, then this gets people to want to buy since they're experiencing this common problem throughout other competitors or throughout the market. Example, if you're selling a specific dog collar, you could talk about how most dog collars choke the specific um, dog based off the product. So then you could incorporate, let's say you sell a harness. With the harness, right, you say, I didn't realize this until and you share the positive claim of my dog doesn't choke when he runs and then you can talk about the current product so that's just one concept here's a, the sixth framework that works really well i use this instead of why this is great as mentioned for common problems in the market and you offer your product as a solution seven i don't know what i would do without x so whether you're selling footwear right whether you're selling a dog collar whether you're selling whatever you center the product as the key problem solver to the pain. No matter what you go through, no matter what niche you're in, somebody has pain. The reason why they buy products is a the, maybe this product will allow them to pour um, to attract more people, right? People buy designer stuff to feel better than everybody else. They want to put. They want to be perceived as higher value. So when you buy, when somebody buys like a Louis Vuitton belt. That makes them stand out compared to somebody who just wears a $20 belt they got from a store. So it's the perceived value of it. People buy Rolexes not to really, they don't really care about the timepiece. They care about the value and the status that's hold onto it when you do purchase the product. For example, when people drive Aston Martins, when they drive Porsches, they want to be held to a higher standard. So this is why ultimately people buy products. They want it, the perceived value to make them greater in terms of other aspects or they will have a specific pain and they're willing to go all in to solve that specific pain in the market right so you want to center your product as either perceiving it as a high value giving them higher status makes them a, gives it a bang for their buck or they're just solving an ultimate pain in the market for example as i mentioned right i don't know what i do without x right you could talk about Shoes. These shoes are the most comfortable I've ever worn. I don't know what I do about this specific product, just to give you some context. Here's the eighth framework that works really well. Show the product in action or the influencer wearing it. I don't know how many times people talk about, oh, in the comments where they have, like, let's say on their own Instagram post, they see a specific feed 
and then they want to they ask questions in terms of oh what does it look like on what if i'm this tall what would it look like for me right so it's very important that you show what the product looks like on what the the result would look like for people to perceive okay is it worth the purchase right people want to see clothes on they want to see sunglasses on they want to see, see shoes worn give the people what they want simple ninth framework is where i've waited too long in, to use x and i should have done it quicker so i've waited this long right let's say six months to transition to use this product i should have done it quicker simple compared to a before and after but definitely drives the point here and then the 10th framework that i suggest following is the two scenario option where you show life before the product and you show life after it right you show the pain and the solution to it so those are just frameworks that are killing it and then you can shoot content along these lines right you got you you got to remember you have to have a strong hook with the hook maybe you make a claim that's um totally disregarded in the community or with the hook maybe you drive you do a ton of market research you say okay these keywords really work well for the market and then you can frame the, the frameworks i gave you and the pdf that i've created to create something special right so these are frameworks you can build on these don't copy them word for word but also I want to talk about how important it is to give your influencer a script, right? So first of all, many don't know the product better than you do, let alone influencers. So you want to create a structure and environment where they can follow a specific framework that you put in, in place for them. So then they can at least be creative, but also build on the specific branding and the vision you've created with your product. So our UGC content structure is simple. We create the script. We give it to the influencer, but also we give them room for them to interpret and add their own different styles in the way they shoot the content, in the way they describe the product, in the way they describe the features and benefits. So then they're not just like robots following A to Z script, right? So in terms of, as I mentioned, frameworks, unboxing videos, TikTok, maybe by X, um, clips along in 20, 30 seconds, the frameworks that work really well is intro, you address the problem, then you transition, then you give... As I mentioned, the top of your pain points, you do the mashups, you, you show the before the after, and then you, you go into the frameworks, as I mentioned. So very important, you give your content creators a script, as well as here's just some content that I've shot I for my clients. I shoes, and I did not believe the hype, so I bought them for myself. Going hands-free with my shoes was one of the best decisions I've made in a long time. I mean, look at these things in action. They pop into place every time. No more awkwardly bending over to untie your shoes, hopping around, trying to put them back on. Kizik's has changed the game. And they're pretty stylish too. My dog loves them, I love them, and it makes taking her out a breeze. Right. That's just organic content that we shot. And then uh, I'll give you another example. Here's an unboxing video as well. There's a handful of products in life that just make things so much easier. And these shoes are one of them. This is the men's Lima shoe from Kizik's. Style comfort and convenience most shoes sacrifice one of those not kizik's i love them so much that i even got a second pair the most noticeable difference between the two are around the heel the athens provides a little extra support and has more of a pop once you try hands-free shoes i'm telling you there is no going back no more heel crushing no more hopping around trying to leave so that's guys is just to give you some frameworks on what to work on, what works well in the market, and to give you an idea of how I'm shooting UGC, how I'm getting influencers to operate and follow a structure that works really well. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me a text back. But let's say you are an econ brand owner, you want to get this process done. I offer complete done for you, as well as I help econ brand owners scale to the next level by shooting content, providing 20 pieces of UGC a month for them, as well as managing the campaigns for TikTok and scaling things up. So if you're interested, let's hop on a strategy session. I can walk you through our process and take you from there. So I hope you enjoyed this piece of content and uh, catch you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.